up. Now what's cool about the Rhea is that it's actually the dad that sit and incubate the nest of eggs and they're also the ones that are going to take care of the chicks after they hatch, which is pretty cool. We are going to be seeing some American bison here, which are the largest land mammals in North America. They can weigh up to 2,200 pounds and can still run up to 35 miles per hour despite their size. They're very powerful for that. That's probably why they're actually our national mammal tonight. We're also going to be seeing some fallow deer over there. Now, fallow deer are a little bit different than white-tailed deer because they're going to keep their white spots for their entire lives. So even as adults, they have their white spots. you guys are ever going to take. We're crossing this ocean and we're out of here. No TSA. We didn't have to board the plane. So a lady is always going to be in charge. Now elephants, African elephants rather, have much larger ears than Asian elephants will have, so it's the easiest way to tell the difference. Also, with African elephants, both the males and females have tusks, which are overgrown in sizes, basically just very large teeth, which are made out of ivory. It's very important not to buy anything with ivory in it, so we can keep these animals safe, because they are still considered a threatened species today. We definitely want to be seeing more of them all around. They have one of the longest pregnancies of any other animal. 22 months, that is almost two years, and they give birth to a baby that weighs between 250 pounds and 300 pounds. This is a white rhino right over here. White rhinos have those horns, which are made out of keratin. That's the same stuff our hair and nails are made out of. They have two of them. They're going to grow back if they get a chip in them, just like our nails will, which does make them pretty unique. Other animals that have which makes them way different from the importance of the animals. This is where you guys are going to get a better look at these zebras. Now a group of zebras is called a dazzle, and that's because they'll stand in a group or a line and confuse their predators with their stripes, kind of like an optical illusion. All of their stripes are different, so every single one of them is going to be very going to go look at some of these ostriches that are over here on either side. Ostriches are the largest birds in the world. They can weigh up to 300 pounds and get up to 8 feet tall. They are part of that rat-type group of flightless birds. The females have the gray feathers while the males have the black feathers and that's how you guys can tell the difference as we keep moving forward. Now zebra stripes are actually brown and not black like most people think. They're just very dark brown and they do tend to get darker as they get older. 
special type of bird over here on the left. It's called a marabou stork. He's got a sitting with his back turned to us right now. This is Fred. He can have a he can have a very strong beak that's actually capable of breaking through bone, and that's because they're scavengers, so they do eat meat a lot. They do eat meat. And over here on the left, there's two Asian water buffalo in the water, of course. They love to spend up to 90% of their day in there and they'll just splash around like that. They are very flexible, which easily helps them get through the mud, and they also have a very thick skin, which is often used as a leather. We also have a super creamy milk, which is often used in India to create liquid butter. You'll see some more zebras over here. Zebras can run 35 miles an hour, so they are just as fast as horses, but they're not commonly domesticated because they're just a lot sassier than horses, so it's more difficult to work with them than it would be with horses, so people just don't, usually. This is the wild plains. We are going to be seeing some more ostriches, so you'll have another opportunity to see some more of those. We're going to see some peacocks, which are a type of bird originally from India, and we're going to see some African hoofstock, and I'll be explaining the differences between the different types of African hoofstock and a little bit about each of them. First thing we're going to see are some more ostriches, which will be over here on the left. If you look up here near the fence, you guys are going to see two chicks, which are with those two adults back there. Those chicks are spotted, which helps keep them hidden in the tall grass, which is very helpful for them, but it makes it more difficult for us to tell if they're a boy or a girl, because their black or gray feathers haven't grown in, so we don't know what color they're going to be yet. Those are Visa orange back there on the right hand, those long straight horns. They can raise their body temperatures up to 116 degrees Fahrenheit, there's three more over here, and they do that live in the desert so they will sweat out all of the water that they drink. Over on the left, these are common eland. They are the largest antelope in the world. They're the tall ones with the white stripes down their backs. They can weigh up to 2,000 pounds. Among them are these ellipsis water buck, which have a shaggier coat and they have these circle pattern around their rear end. The ellipsis water buck have that ellipse is part of their name because of the circle patterns that they have on them and they're also very good swimmers. This is the more common eland over here on the left. They have some stripes down their back so they are so large. They're pretty slow moving but they can still jump up to eight feet high when they need to in the air so pretty good at jumping. Over on the right, these white animals with the cinnamon color around their neck are called Dama Gazelle. They are very critically endangered. There's only a few hundred of those left in the wild right now. So, they are also very rare. They're the largest of all the different types of gazelle.
this pig is in here. She is the only albino animal that I was talking about before. This piggy is a giant Burmese python. She has those beautiful red eyes. She's super cool. We also have Bailey the baby bear come up here. She's really sweet. And lip stock and Johnny Burns.
Driver Twain will be with you for the second half of your adventure. You guys should say hi. Did you guys have a good time at camp? Yeah, did you see the baby bear? Yeah, Miss Piggy. She's an albino ball python. She's so cool. Did you see Godzilla the iguana? No? Yeah, 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 We do have our biggest hill in the safari. I think we've got our uh, red and coley cattle at the bottom of it. We can go a little fast. Woo! Oh yeah, yeah, nice breeze. Oh, you're so nice. We do have some red and coley cattle. They do have the largest horns of any cattle in the world. From tip to tip, they can be six feet across. They were domesticated by the Watsuki tribe in Africa. We also have some uh, black buck. They're going to be over here on your right. That's a bachelor herd of black buck, so they're all males. The oldest ones have the darkest coloration on them. And those little guys are very athletic. They can run at 40 miles per hour and jump five feet in the air. We also have some greater kudu. They are the large brown animals over there on your right. The greater kudu are the second largest antelope in Africa. The oldest male has two and a half twists in his horns. It takes six years for those horns to fully grow in. I hope you guys are ready for your next half because there's going to be lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> That's what I was going for. over there on your right, the smallest one was born on Friday of last week, so the smallest one's only a week old. And these animals were critically endangered in the wild, but conservationists brought their populations back up to a stable number and growing. So hopefully they can do the same for the other endangered animals on our tour. They're also the smallest of the new species. And when a black wildebeest is born, it can walk and run five to seven minutes after it is born. And as we go through this area, you will notice there are quite a few holes dug in the ground. We also have a white peacock over there on your left. He's not albino, he's actually leucistic, so he has blue eyes instead of red eyes. He does have some pretty white feathers though. And we also have our addicts. They are also white animals. They live in a desert environment. They're going to be at both sides of the truck. These guys are critically endangered. They live in a desert environment. They get a lot of water they need from roots and plants they eat out there. In the summer, their coat is the pretty white. And in winter, it is actually a darker gray, so they get more heated from the sun. few holes dug the ground in this area. The animals dug these holes to get to the cooler earth underneath. Guys, they, you can't have her on the end. Can you just put your child in the middle? So it hold it in the middle. Because it is a safety precaution because the end is a little bit is a little bit insecure. Were you in the back? Because in the back of Guys, on my truck, can you just have them in the middle? It makes me feel safer. I also don't want to get yelled at by anyone. Well, uh, the rules are that they can't be on the edge, so whoever was on the other truck was not following the safety precautions. Okay, we do have our lions coming up next. Can you also make sure you have a seatbelt on, please? I'll be in front of in the seatbelt. So we got our lions coming up next. They are the only social big cats, and they are the only big cat that lives in a family group called a pride. There can be more than one male as long as there's an alpha. Can you just pass in your seat, please? Uh, no, right. <laughs> so there are lions over there. There's a flying mess on top of the platform there. Was the boat earlier. So they are the only social big cat, so they're the only big cat that lives in a family group called a pride. 
there can be more than one male as long as there's an alpha. The alpha does have the thickest and darkest mane of all of the males. The others are called beta males. You can hear their roar up to five miles away. They roar to scare off challengers coming into their territory and also to gather together any scattered pride members if they ever become separated. And these cats can sleep quite a lot. They can sleep up to 21 hours in a day. There are some lions over there. There's a really big male back there. That's probably the alpha. He's got that big, thick mane. It does take three years for their mane to fully grow in because it is so thick. Their babies are pretty small when they get when they are born. They're about this big. We do have a nine-month-old lion cub in Safari Discoveries. If you guys went through that area earlier today, you might have been able to see her. So now we're gonna go to Black Bear Ridge, where we will see our black bears. There's a little guy over there on your right. And he's actually pretty big. So since he's a little bit close to the gate, we just need to wait for our warden to come and do a little bear corralling. But these are the smallest and most docile <laughs> bears. They can weigh two to 500 pounds. The largest black bear, black bear ever recorded was around 800 pounds. So there's our warden. We just need them to be a little bit farther away from the gates so that we can open it up. When we do get into the air, we'll probably be able to see that bear pretty well since he was just really close. Warden has to come back and open the gate for us. Well, black bears can be found in 49 of the United States. Does anyone know which state they're not found in? Hawaii. You're right. It's Hawaii. <laughs> well, which United States they're not found in, like anywhere else besides North America? The black bear. There are brown bears in brown bears in Europe which we'll see later on, the brown bear. But we're going to see the black bears first. And there it was over there. Oh, so we had a few bears over there. And there's some on your left as well. There are two nurseries in this area, so as we go by, we might be able to see some of the little cubs. They were born last year, so they are getting pretty big now. So as we come up over on your right, there is one in the tub. That's mom. Her other cub is hanging out on the side there. Mama bears are very territorial about their young. That's why she's in her own little area, so she can have the least stress while raising her kids. And these bears don't have to be black. They can actually be brown, blonde, or gray. So they come in different coat co colors. There is a little guy eating over there on the right. You may also see the other two cubs in that area over there on your left. There's two more of our cubs hanging out together. And then another little guy over there on your right. And bears are opportunistic omnivores, which means they eat anything and everything. They're the ones that get the bad rap for going through your picnic baskets or camping and eating everything out of it. Fruit, bread, hot dogs, anything they can find. So there is a pond over there. All of the green stuff is called duckweed. The bears like to eat it and it's very nutritious for them. So they get some around in there and then they come out. Still have some on their fur. They also love to climb, so we have some platforms in here for them. They can climb up a tree just as easily as you or I could walk. So they are very good climbers. And as we go by, we can say hello to our gate guard. Well, it looks like that black buck has migrated to the little pond over there. As we go around on your right, you'll be able to see them. 
darkest one is the oldest. And in the next area, we're going to see more bears. We have a little bear joke for you guys. What do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. Ha 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 ha. But, um, Looks like a red lechway around. There's also another red and coli cattle over there. But on your right, the pretty red animals are the red lechway. They almost look like little deer. Their back legs are longer than their forelegs. That helps them run in the marshy environment where they live. And the male's horns can grow to be three feet long. So now we're going to go to Terra Ursus. We do have another gate guard we can say hello to. And then the red and coli cattle on the other side. They're going to be a lot larger and a little more aggressive than the buck. <laughs> He's probably watching all the red and over there, but that was one of our cubs from last year. That's Bones in Hollywood. They were at Camp Aventura last year. Yeah, he was. He was there were cows walking around over there, so he's probably watching the cows go by. But it does take these bears about four years to get to their full adult size, where they can weigh around 800 pounds. So they're still a little small to be in with their other bears. So we got Pusson coming up on your left over there. When they eat, they like to either put their bodies over their food or their paws around it so no one else takes their stuff. We also have some coming up on your right, up on the hill over there. There's one sleeping over there on your right. Bears are omnivores, so they do eat other things besides meat. They do like berries. Our wardens give them fruit as cheese. They do like fish, you're right. Yeah, they do like salmon a lot. We have some bears hanging out in the water, because they do like water as well. Oh, someone's got something in his paws over there. He's got... <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> There are turtles in there, but they that guy's got like a branch or something in his paws. Looks like he's eating some grass. There's one hanging out in the tub over there on your left. So they do have a little tunnel. It goes underneath the road so they can enjoy both sides. Either put their bodies over their food or their paws around it so no one else takes their stuff. <laughs> and bears actually give birth during hibernation, so they are asleep, and when the babies are born, they make a very loud humming sound which stimulates mom's bell blood down so they can drink while she's asleep. And the next area we're going to go to is our conservation area. So, all of this is natural New Jersey wetland. Does anyone know what a didgeridoo is? I heard someone say that it is an instrument. You are correct. It's from Australia. It sounds pretty cool. That is because we're going to Australia next. So we've got some cool Aboriginal artwork for you guys to look at as we go through. Let's have a joke for you guys. Where does the kangaroo like to eat breakfast? 
Hi, Hop. Hi. Hey, can I say Hop? It's a joke. Okay. We don't have the red kangaroo in this area. A lot of our kangaroos like hanging out in a big clearing over there on your left. Might also be some coming out the right, I don't know. We also have our emus in this area. So the emus, their blue coloration on their head is the same color as their egg, and they are the only bird in the world that has a calf muscle that helps them run faster. We do have some black swans that are hanging out in the pond over there on your right. They are the only swan that cannot dive completely underwater. And as we turn around the corner, we do have some kangaroos. They're coming up on your right. Are going to be the males, the smaller, grayer ones, and the females. There's a little one right there hanging out. So one of them does have a joey in her pouch. You can see there are legs coming out of the pouch right there. She's like eating some, eating some grass right there. The other one hopping actually did have it as a joey in her pouch. Oh, ma'am, can you please sit down and uh, have your seatbelt on, nice and tight? Thanks. Well, if we move, I don't want anything bad to happen. So we got some more anchors over there. You guys did see the little feet coming out. But they do have, their legs are fused at the hips, so they cannot move them independently of each other. That's the reason they're all laying like that with their legs out to the side. And their tail is so thick and strong, they can rest their entire body weight on it. So in the male's box, they box with their paws, stand on their tail, and all